Hello everyone. In this INR number 93, I will be telling you about the cardiac murmurs, which is again a very important topic for exam, especially for NEET and FMG exam. Right. So first we will discuss about systolic murmurs. So there are three types of murmurs which we are going to discuss in broadly. Systolic murmurs and diastolic murmurs and continuous murmur so these are the three group of the murmur we are uh, we are going to discuss so number one we are going to discuss about aortic stenosis right so what is aortic stenosis you will hear the murmur as a crescendo decrescendo ejection murmur so crescendo means it is rising in the you know uh, the rising frequency will be there rising sound will be there so now you can see there is a rise in the murmur and then they will be getting decrease so rise is crescendo and then decreasing decrescendo so crescendo decrescendo ejection murmur you will see in the aortic stenosis you can see it is starting after s1 and completing by s2 so it is a systolic murmur between the systole you are seeing this right so best heard at the aortic valve area as i have discussed in the previous video also aortic valve area which is parasternal second right intercostal space right and it can be also heard in the herbs point remember this can be heard in the airs point which is the parasternal third in left intercostal space which we have discussed in previous discussion what is important in the aortic stenosis this crescendo decrescendo uh, murmur they will radiate to the carotids so that is very important they will be radiating to the carotid which will be given in your exam also so crescendo decrescendo ejection systolic murmur which is radiating to the carotid think about aortic stenosis now come to the mitral regurgitation or tricuspid regurgitation so both mitral and tricuspid regurgitation mitral regurgitation they both have the holosystolic murmur but when we talk about mitral regurgitation right holosystolic holosystolic means throughout the systole it will happen so see you it, you are seeing from the s1 it is starting and it is completing by the s2 heart sound so it is involving the entire systole holosystolic murmur and it will be louder at the apex that is one important point louder at the apex mitral regurgitation right where is the apex earlier i have told you mid clavicular line fifth intercostal space and remember this will radiate to the axilla aortic stenosis systolic murmur which will be radiating to the carotid this is important point we have to remember mitral regurgitation or tricuspid regurgitation when we are talking about especially the mitral regurgitation when you think about mitral mitral regurgitation uh, murmurs they are also holosystolic murmur but they will be radiating toward the axilla axillary radiation is mitral regurgitation right carotid radiation you think about aortic stenosis right tricuspid regurgitation you will again hear the holosystolic murmur like this from the s1 to s2 and loudest at the tricuspid area because it is in the tricuspid area so that area will be having tricuspid regurgitation right which is the fourth intercostal space in the left side right mitral valve prolapse this is again very important so now you can see s1 to s2 half of the way there is nothing it is starting after the half and then it is increasing in the amplitude so that is what we have to remember late decrescendo murmur so they are increasing in the later so late crescendo murmur not decrescendo late crescendo murmur with mid systolic click that is very important because of the prolapse of the mitral valve you will see the click so mid systolic click is very important in mitral valve prolapse and this is very important pyq in exam right so mitral valve prolapse how is the murmur late crescendo systolic murmur right systolic murmur number one systolic murmur and this is late crescendo systolic murmur and it starts after mid systolic click and that occurs after carotid pulse so remember after carotid pulse it will occur so where you will hear it best so it is best heard over the apex and it is loudest just before the s2 you can see that the amplitude of sound is before s2 the loudest one right so now you understood late crescendo murmur mid systolic click and they are loudest at the apex because they are mitral area so mitral area will be having louder sound for this one right ventricular septal defect vsd so what will happen in vsd you can see there is also holosystolic murmur so holosystolic harsh sound murmur and it will be loudest at tricuspid area so this will be loudest at tricuspid area so that is what we have to remember so in vsd loudest at tricuspid area because heart you know left ventricle is pushing very faster harder because the mus uh, muscle is very thick so flow will be from the left to right so that is why right side will be having more you know intensity of the sound and that is why it is heard on the right side right so now understand so vsd is holosystolic harsh sound and tricuspid area right 
Now coming to the diastolic murmur. So in diastolic murmur, there are two things, aortic regurgitation and mitral stenosis, right? So aortic regurgitation, what you will see, you can see S1, S2. There is nothing in this stole. So this is after this stole means in the beginning of the diastole. So that is why diastolic murmur. So aortic regurgitation is diastolic murmur. How is the murmur? Early diastolic, right? It is starting in the early. And how is the murmur? They are increasing in the intensity and then they are decreasing. So early diastolic decrescendo high pitched blowing murmur, right? So high pitched blowing murmur decrescendo type of murmur early diastole it starts and where you will be hearing them best. So it will be best heard at the base. If there is a aortic root dilatation, so it will be at the base of the heart, right? Or if there is a valve involvement, then it will be left external border. So valvular involvement, left external border and if it is a root dilatation, that will be the base of the heart, will be best heard sound of the aortic regurgitation. Mitral stenosis, what is important in mitral stenosis? So you can see here also S1, S2 means there is nothing in this stool. It will start in the diastole. And in diastole also it starts after a opening snap. In between also there is not immediately after the diastole. Immediately after the diastole is the aortic regurgitation mitral stenosis after the opening snap this is the important pyq so it follows opening snap right and what is the murmur it is a delayed rumbling mid to late diastolic murmur you can see delayed delayed rumbling mid to delayed murmur after the opening snap remember it is after the opening snap so decreased interval between s2 and os if you find that means there is a increase in the severity right so if this interval is decreased that means severity of the mitral stenosis is more in continuous murmur what you will see uh, it is usually seen in patent ductus arteriosus right so patent ductus arteriosus will be having continuous murmur right so continuous murmur uh, how you are going to describe continuous murmur means it will start from s1 s2 and it will go to the diastole so systole diastole both are involved so what is this it is a continuous machine like murmur so machine patent this is a mnemonic right machine is patent machine patent we do when you know when you are creating any machine so that is a mnemonic machine patent so machine like murmur is seen in patent ductus arteriosus so what is machine like murmur it is a continuous murmur so it is a continuous machine like murmur where you will hear them best best at the left infraclavicular area right so left infraclavicular area will be the best heard for the continuous or machine like murmur for the patent ductus arteriosus and it will be it will be loudest at the s2 so you can see the intensity of the sound is loudest at the s2 right and it is usually related to the congenital rubella infection or prematurity so this is very important uh, mcq also in congenital rubella what kind of defect you will see patent ductus arteriosus and what will be the murmur continuous machine like murmur right so it is continuous machine like murmur and louder sound will be at the time of s2 right so these are the important point we have to remember about murmurs so keep revising these topics you will definitely get some question from here in your exam best wishes